This is Jeff Ryle from G4 Geomatic Resources in Houston, and today we're going to go over a GS16 and GS18, how to set up in base mode using the 1 watt radio. 1 watt radio is used for radio RTK solutions, and typically get a range of around 1 mile, um, so it's good for smaller construction sites, and um, you can have as many rovers working off this as possible. So um, we're going to go over the over the GS16 and 18. Um, the components that you need, and then how to set it up um, and configure using the CS20 in the GS base mode. And we'll take a quick look at all the uh, G GS16 base radio settings to get it working. Later on, we'll do a video on using a Satel 35 watt to get more range, and also a video on the GS18 rover uh, to work off this base station setup. So this is just, if you had a GS18, we'd have to make sure we have a GAT uh, 28 antenna plugged in, and uh, you can put it on a tripod or on a two meter pole, and then we'd set it up with the uh, CS20 to get it operating as a base station. So what's neat is the GS18 has got a one watt transmit and receive radio. You can put an SD card in above the battery uh, to record static data. Um, the GS16, which we'll use today, once again has a one watt transmit and receive so it can act as a base or a rover. Uh, we'd hook uh, either a GAT 109 or GAT 108 with a GAT 2 antenna. This would push, you know, roughly uh, uh, 5,000 feet. And once again, we'll configure with the CS20. Okay, here we are. We're going to go over the uh, GS16 1 watt as a base station. Here's a GS16. First thing we're going to notice is this is the, the antenna, and we're going to hook up a GAT 109 and a GAT 2 antenna. And this, with the one watt, could probably push half a mile to a mile, and that would just snap onto here. Um, it is possible, if you wanted an external antenna, to unscrew the GAT 2 and then hook up the, the TNC cable to your external antenna to get more height. Okay, so that's possible. Um, but we use this. It's also possible if you wanted to go on a tri rack, you could get a GAT 108 and that would snap onto here to put the antenna up so it doesn't press down. Okay. Um, what we'll do is if we're running the one watt, this unit here will put the GEB 212 battery and this should run it for like four or five hours. If we collect the static data, pop this off and we'll put the micro SIM card We'll pop the micro SIM card out, and this micro SIM card would actually slide in that little slot there to record your static data. So we're just going over, we'll put this stuff back on, and what's neat is the GS16 has got a one watt transmit and receive, so it could be a base or a rover. If you take a quick look at the GS18, it's very similar. The GS18 has a one watt transmit receive radio. And we'll see the icon here that shows the radio. And if we're transmitting from the GS18, we snap in the GAT28. And if we're doing static, once again, we have the battery popped in. And there's a slot here for the SD card. Put the standard SD card in, it's a little bit easier than the 16. And then this can be programmed to be the base station, transmit one watt through this antenna, get half a mile to a mile. That goes over the components uh, for the 16 and the 18. What we'll do now is take a quick look at the, the settings on the CS20. Okay, um, we have the GS16 set up outside and on the main screen of Captivate. First thing we did is went to settings, customization, app visibility, and we scroll down and we turned on, sometimes this is turned off, we turned on switch to base and we can move that up or down, depending on where you want to position that on your application screen. So if we hit okay and scroll over, number six is switch to base. So we escape back out. I could just type in number six and that'll switch to base mode. First thing we'll do is Bluetooth the sensor. So we did went to settings, connections, all of the connections, uh, connect to base. And in this case, we selected the GS16 and then hit search and it came up with the serial number, then hit okay. 
And what it will do is it will then spin and um, then we'll see that we're connected and we're tracking the satellites. Now the important thing is on the base station, the, you always have a big circle, it'll never fix because we're pumping raw data out. So it'll also have a big circle and our CQ value should be 10, 20 feet. And now the icons change, we actually have a radio. So let's take a deeper look at the settings. We'll hit settings, GS base, and satellite tracking. This unit, we have GPS, GLONASS, Galileo. Beidou is not enabled. If it was, just check that. Under advanced, there's our cutoff angle. Morning path reduction, we can have that checked or unchecked. We normally do 10 degrees for a base station or 12 degrees, then hit OK. Also under settings, GS base, GNSS raw data is where we want to record static. And I'll turn it on when I want to do it. We'll record the SGS sensor. There's an SD card, mini SD card in the sensor. And I'd recommend five or 10 seconds, like a MD format, MDB, hit OK. All right. So let's take a look at how we set up the parameters. We'll hit settings, connections, or the connections. And in this case, we have the GS base Bluetooth. Came down to RTK base number one. We'll use this to set up the internal one watt radio. I could set up RTK base two for the external radio. We'll do that on another video. And I can turn these off and on depending if I want the internal. So in this case, we're gonna use a one watt internal so RTK base number one, we'll hit edit, F3. And we said check this box to transmit RTK data. And it's important, we gotta pick GS radio because we want the GS radio. And the device, if we hit the device, we come in and select the SatTel TR4, hit OK. And the RTK data, data format is important, RTCN3 MSN. MSN helps compact it to make it more efficient. Data rates, one second is fine. RTK base ID, we can call this point number five and put a number from one to 11, and it'll transmit that over and we'll show you on the rover how to use that unique ID number if, if you want to, you don't have to. Now in here, control is where the channels are. So if I hit control, right now we don't have anything programmed. So if I hit function settings, I've got to type a password in. So I'll just, uh, type in the password, and you'll get this from your sales rep. Okay, and then we come back, and now I can hit F2 new, and type in channel number one, and type in the frequencies. So I wanna make sure they line up with the rover, so type in 461.075. In this case, I'll put 100, that means one watt is milliwatts and then I'll hit number two I'll just put in two for now 12 and a half kilohertz that's important that's the spacing and I'll put 461.1 so you can just keep on going and typing in all the different frequencies that you have from the FCC important to hit the store button and now that's stored and in this case we can then pick the the data modulation language um, since we're going to a, a GS-18, I could pick Satel FSK-16. If I was going to a GS-14, I would, as a rover, I'd have to pick Satel 4SK um, on this to match up with the rover. Uh, the 14 can't handle, the 16 and 18 can handle the 16 FSK. So that's important to make sure that language lines up. We'll hit OK. And now we're set up. And this is where if you want to change the channel, I can come in here, hit the control, and then change that channel if we're getting stepped on from channel one to channel two. And that's how fast we can change it. So we hit okay. So we're now on channel two, hit okay. And now we're, we go to base setup. And over any point, we've already picked a point. So I can say over known point. And there's our height at the tripod. So let's say the height was 4.1 feet. If you're set up on a two meter pole, then you could change that to GS16 pole, put in two meters, hit OK, hit next. All right, and there's a base station coordinate. If I want to add my own coordinate in, I could hit new and type in the state plane coordinates there, or hit function coordinate and toggle to latitude and longitude. Okay, but in this case, we have that position there, we hit OK, next. And now, let's say you want to go to rover mode. And in this case, we'll hit the rover mode. So right now it's pumping data out. 
the rover mode will convert us back to the rover. Okay, that's a quick overview. Um, what's interesting is if you did have, if you picked a position like over any point, plus, plus or minus 10 feet, it's always good to put a check shot 50 feet away, check in every day. You don't want to go out the second day and hit over any point because it could be 10 feet in a different direction. That's where you pick the, the last setup or known point. Um, if you type in a coordinate and you're more than 300 feet from your true position, it'll come up and the GPS will give you an error message. It'll say coordinates of the base stations differ from what's expected. And that really means you probably either set up on the wrong point or typed in fat fingered a position in. So it's really a nice, a nice check. Okay. So those are just a couple of tips uh, to watch out for when setting the base up. Um, so once again, the GS16, when it's set up, we'll look at the lights. And if we're recording static data, this light will blink every five seconds. Make sure we have an SD card. If there's no SD card, this will be red. Make sure we have an antenna plugged in, like a GAT 109, GAT 2 that we talked about. Otherwise, you won't get any range. Um, if you have an external mobile whip that you can, the more height you get, the more distance you'll get. And uh, once again, when we start transmitting data, this will blink every second. If it's a rover receiving data, you see this light blink every second. This is incoming and outgoing. If you take a look at the uh, GS18, it's very similar. Um, once again, there's an out, if you have a one watt transmit, this light will blink every second. And um, if you're recording static data, this SD light will blink every five seconds. If there's no SD card, it'll be red blinking. Um, so once again, we've got to plug in the GAT28 antenna. So on one of the ports here, uh, see so it says port A right here. You'll see this icon, it's not the best picture, but you see the radio icon, and that's where we plug in the radio antenna. Okay, so that's a quick uh, overview. Um, once again, here's a team at G4 Geomatic Resource in Houston. It's myself, Jeff, John O'Rourke, who helped out with this video, and Ronald and Celia in the Office for Service and GIS. And once again, here's some more contact information, our email, and here's the Leica support team as well. There's an 800 number and an email if you need help. So I hope you found that beneficial. We'll do some more videos on the rovers and the base Satel 35 watts later on. Thanks for watching.